today. The balance in our account is one thousand seventy-five dollars and ninety-seven cents. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is election of offices, and I think Seal had a. You were going to bring. Uh, I had twenty copies, copies of it. Or there's some there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. We got another one that's here. This is going to be the move on guy. For the he he comes to the vigil to the guy. Rich. 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 Welcome, Rich. Oh, Rich, you're back here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Good. And he was in the paper today. Oh. It's in the Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, each year at our annual picnic uh, and at our annual meeting is when we choose the officers for the executive board and for the committees and the liaison positions. And so um, hopefully you're sitting near someone who has the list. And um, we usually also, if you, if you have anyone that's you don't see on the list that you would see, like to see nominated. Um, please speak up. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to. Um, I move to, to accept items. the slate. Okay. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. I think I heard Clint. Clint cool. second in that. All right. <laughs> Any discussion? Well, it was wonderful when I called people whose names are on here. I think I got all of you. I hope I did. And you all said yes, and we were very grateful. <laughs> you didn't. Oh, you didn't call. Them. Yeah, he's not here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, but so she, you didn't, she didn't call. Oh, she didn't call. Sponsoring with lots of different organizations, uh, Rosemary's with uh, Rosemary Furs with the History Department. They just signed on to be co-sponsors. Also, um, the Psychology Department, some of the Education Departments, uh, parts of the Education College of Education. Um, we're going to have uh, Jonathan Kozel. Some of you may have known he wrote the Savage Inequalities, uh, Shame, uh, Shame of a Nation, which was all about the, the issue of uh, segregation in schools and how it's still happening in schools now. And so he's going to be speaking on September 26th at 7 at the Cal High School Auditorium. So we were the one of the co-sponsors of that. That's coming up this fall. But if you have other ideas or anything, issues that you'd like to see us take on, let's, let's have a little discussion. If anybody would like to share. What's some issues that you care a lot about? Besides peace, I mean, including peace, I mean, whatever. Any any issues you want to have? Do you have some? Climate change and environmental uh, alternative energy is actually, I've got a bumper sticker on my car that says Homeland Security 
that's up is what is it, climate change, or at least alternative energy, is homeland security. And I believe in that strongly. We, we've got, we're going down the drain, and most people are saying no. We're, we're, we're already suffering climate change. I, uh, but uh, they'll say, don't even go there. You know, it's ridiculous, just because we have a hot summer. Mm -hmm. I was at a King County um, evening, okay, look this way, guys. and they had a film on, and I think it's Irons, Jaws of Iron, um, Friends of Sir, something like that, and the whole thing. basically about the suffragettes. Oh, the yeah, Jaws of Iron, yes. The film was incredible. I don't know why it's gone around, or if they can release it, or they want to do it slower, but it's an incredible film. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Couple hours. It's what women went through to get the vote. Isn't yeah. that the basic yes. iron job? Yeah. Suffering and fighting and being yeah. jailed. And it, it Jaws of Iron had to do because they would take hunger strikes, vials of hunger mm -hmm. strikes, in the prison and they had been arrested for fighting for the right to vote. And they would be put in prison and then they would go on hunger strikes. And would they actually forcibly yeah. open their like jaws a, oh. and stick a hose down their oh. throats in order to force feed them. Does this, does this uh, documentary go back to the beginning days before the Civil War, or is it uh, just the... No, I don't think it's a documentary. It comes across the United States. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, after the time the though, people there were handing out petitions, and we were signing them. Or you need a certain number in order to get something on the ballot that would change that crazy Supreme Court thing about um, Citizens United. Right. Except it's not. It's about companies. <laughs> <laughs> Corporations United. There is um, there is a headquarters that's very close to the uh, Senate building in Washington where the women's movement went on in the, from about 1900 on. It was the Women's National Association or something. And uh, it's got a lot of this history. That if you're ever in Washington, it's a fascinating place and it's still the, the home of one of the suffragettes that uh, donated her home to it. So it's, it goes through enough of all of that. Is that available? Is that something that could be uh, a program for the network to show? Is that is that film available? Uh, I would think so. It's been out quite a while. It's quite Hillary, available. Hillary, what's her last name? Twain. She was a lead role. <clears throat> there were major actors and actresses that were in it. I, I don't know how available it is. We actually watched it at school and government this past mm. oh. year. It's called Iron Job Angels. Oh, and it is, it's great. Oh, I want to stay, so you have the mission to watch it in the district. Well, that's what happened to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Harvard School got me. Maybe we could get it. Mm -hmm. Sure. Any other suggestions? Pat, could we put you on the program committee so you could help us with that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, say after December 1st. Um, <laughs> well, there's. Um, I would be glad to help. I also am teaching an LLI course mm -hmm. on the imperative of alternative energy. Okay. And I have bought personally, I have three films, three DVDs. One of them is called Fuel, uh, which is all about oil and diesel and so forth, and biodiesel. Um, but I've got two others that I still haven't looked at yet. The one was on global warming, and um, I'm going to buy Inconvenient Truth. So I, I'm going to have three or four films like that that during the year could be watched that we all really have. Dan forgot to include in our year's activities that you brought in a number of films. Yeah, uh, you yeah. Uh, you, you. Yeah, yeah. And and I don't know if Oh, that was all on the economic meltdown. Yeah, the inside job. Yeah, yeah. The, um, 
one of the things that's going on too is the uh, the drone strikes that uh, the Obama administration has uh, used in Pakistan, and um, that's a difficult issue because um, while it's targeted assassinations, it's at the same time um, not uh, bombing civilians um, in the same way that the uh, dumb bombs would. So. Um, but that's that's an issue that's going on, and he's uh, the Obama administration has really uh, used that uh, great deal. So, is that Chuck? <laughs> Our Chuck. All right. Another issue, I think, is the uh, the whole issue of the, the power of banks because uh, they, it continues to be an issue affecting the economy, and uh, they seem to be uh, resisting regulation to the point where it's uh, uh, disadvantaging the rest of the country's economy. And uh, there have been, you know, I think that's something that's that's worthwhile paying attention to with regard to. Uh, uh, areas where they may prosecute people for some of these transgressions, and I think some of the, if there's any potential for prosecution, you know, we should be supportive of that. Um, that that's a, very much a justice issue because of what they've done with uh, manipulating people into taking on mortgages that were uh, not good for themselves, but good for this mortgage brokers. Um, those are very serious problems that, that occurred with the whole financial crisis, right. and it's still going on. Speaking of that, Rich, you want to say anything about what you've been doing with the foreclosure issue? And uh, All right. Rich is uh, involved with uh, MoveOn.org, and he's also uh, put together a really informational, uh, valuable pamphlet that has a very valuable phone number and other contact information on it for people who are actually facing foreclosure. Um, one of the statistics that I learned from Rich is that one out of ten homes in DeKalb County, is that still correct, is um, either in foreclosure, in danger of going into foreclosure, or has been foreclosed upon. And so, um, Rich, you want to share some of the well, work you're doing uh, in that? I need to do myself, I'm a recruiter, can move on here. Uh, we have a DeKalb Sycamore Council. We have over 150 members, and we're being a recruiter. I recruit. Uh, Move On is a progressive liberal organization. Uh, we address the issues of social and economic inequality. We respect faith-based groups because faith-based groups, ever since the beginning of the 1900s and before, have been central and moving forward in a progressive way on social and economic justice issues. So our agenda going into the summer and the fall is basically to get our president reelected. okay? Move on has endorsed Obama. 90% of our members are going to be voting for him. We also endorse all down ballot progressive candidates. And important here, is that we want to stop the disenfranchisement of poor and minority voters, which is going on full steam. Uh, we also are pushing for a move to amend, which is the Citizens United decision by the Supreme Court. I would, I'm trying to get enough signatures to get a ballot resolution on the county and, and city council levels. Uh, we'll see how far that goes. Uh, I have a move to amend petition here. I'll pass it around. If anybody would like to sign it, please do. Uh, as regards the foreclosure issue, I've distributed over 6,000 flyers within the county with the help of the Democratic Party, move on members, and people of the interfaith. And I thank you all very much. And there are 26,000 and change residential structures in DeKalb County. I would like to get 6,000 more out within the next month or so. Uh, one out of 10 houses have been filed on. Not all of them go to foreclosure, but at least 90% of the people that have been filed on will be out of their houses within a few months, either on a short sale, 
a deed in lieu of foreclosure, which is a bill, an auction sale, a bank repo. Uh, if you look around your neighborhoods, you'll see vacant houses, you'll see houses going into disrepair. This is not only bad for individual families, it's a real stress, I mean, it even breaks up families, but the price of your home, if you have a vacant house on your block, goes down over 7% immediately. Okay, it's also a hardship in the community because you're losing your tax base, you're losing your population base, and that's not good for government services or for maintenance of the community. So it's a real, you know, gut issue. I'm trying to address it. There's help out there. If we can get our president reelected and we can get him a majority in the House, we can get some of this middle class legislation through instead of it being obstructed for the last four years by the Republicans. And this is serious. They got a lot of money. They're going to mislead a lot of people. So regardless of whether you think he's going to win or not, it's going to be a fight. So and that's about it. Did I, did I answer any question that you had? <laughs> Rich, is there one piece of legislation that would stop the foreclosures? Uh, Basically, what I'm aiming for, my personal goal, is student debt forgiveness and mortgage debt forgiveness. You're not going to have a real estate market until you have a loan-to-value ratio of at least 90 to 100 percent. If you own a house and you bought it and you, you paid 150 for it, and now it's worth less than 100, and you got a $130,000 mortgage on it, you can't sell it. Okay, you just might as well just give the keys back to the bank and ask for mercy. Okay. And so, if, if when those things happen, if that was a business situation, they would file they would file a, a, a bankruptcy reorganization, and their creditors would um, take a hit where the creditors don't get everything in uh, in from those loans. Right. With the, in the case of uh, mortgages. That doesn't happen. The, the uh, when the crisis hit in '09, after Obama was in in uh, power and the Democrats had a majority, the power of the bank lobby was so strong that they could not get any legislation that would force the banks to to eat any of those costs. The only thing that they could pass was um, uh, subsidy, taxpayer subsidy, to try and keep people in their homes, and. What Rich is touching on is is that is the issue of forcing the banks to to face the reality of writing down some of those loans and taking some of those costs uh, of losses on those on those mortgages. Right, and there is a program if you qualify for it, uh, they will reduce your principal amount. Okay, in other words, if you have a principal amount of let's say one hundred thirty thousand dollars and your home won't sell for any more than eighty. They will reduce your principal if you qualify. There's a lot more legislation pending to make it easier for people to reduce their mortgages and their interest rate. We just have to get the legislation through. It's very difficult. And there's, all, there's legislation written by Alec that's trying to get the banks off the hook. It's called the J.P. Morgan loophole. And please go to moveon.org and sign the petition. Don't let them do it. There's a lot of sneaky legislation out there. Thank you, Rich. Okay, sorry. No, 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 no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and along those lines, I wanted to talk a little bit about a flyer that the Bill Moore has been passing out today. It looks like this. Um, on the low